Hello and welcome. Today what I would like to do is show you how to create an outline for an essay or research paper in Microsoft Word. And the reason why we use outlines is because what they allow us to do is they allow us to organize our thoughts and they allow us to see that we have an appropriate amount of support and details for our essay or research paper before we even start writing it. Uh, research has shown that using an outline, especially for novice students, really improves their grade by about a whole letter grade. Now, if you're a more advanced writer, you really don't need to do outlines because what re the research has found is that advanced writers just outline in their head. They don't need to use a piece of paper anymore to outline. So once you start outlining in your head and you start seeing things in your head, then you're no longer a novice. So this is mostly for novice writers. So the first thing I'm going to do is going to start down here at the start menu and click on it. And then I'm going to scroll down to Word right here. Now, if you want to, you can uh, right click on it and go more and pin it to your taskbar. And your taskbar is this bar down here. So if you wanted to pin to there, you could. And I think I'm going to do that. So I'm going to pin it to my taskbar. So here it is. But now I'm just going to click on it. And the next thing I want to do is click on a blank document. And in this blank document, uh, the very first thing I'm going to do is just, I can just type a number. Like if I wanted to type like Roman numerals, like I. And once I put that period there and I press the space bar, it automatically sees that I probably want to create an outline. And so now Word is going to automatically format that for me. Now, if you want to take more control over your outline, you can come up here and you can take greater control of your outline right here. Now, one of the other things I did before this was I changed the default font because the default font in Word is like Calibri and size 11. But if you're creating like an APA formatted paper, it really needs to be Georgia or Times New Roman 12 point. So what I did here is I just kind of clicked on this corner here and I changed my font to Georgia, made sure it was regular, made sure it was 12. And then what I did is I hit this button here and I checked this all documents based on the normal dot, um, the normal dot, dot, mm, template. And I clicked OK. And what this is going to do is now every document that I open is going to be Georgia and 12 point. Now, uh, you can also change this to Times New Roman also works. So when you're making an outline, the first thing you do is we have our introduction. And this is just very generic outline right now. So I'm going to have a, so after I typed introduction, you saw that I hit the enter key. And you can see it automatically number two, but I want it to go under introduction. I want this to be a subunit of introduction. So then what you do is you hit your tab key. And you can see it automatically indents it for you. If I hold down the shift key and hit tab, it takes it back out. So this is tab, shift, tab, tab, shift, tab. So I'm going to tab. And mine is going to be broad to narrow introduction. So I'm going to start with just sources, like what are sources of information. And then I'm going to be more specific and go into primary and secondary sources of information. And now I'm going to shift tab back out, and this is where I like to write my thesis. And my thesis statement is primary sources are more reliable and credible than secondary sources. So this is a comparison essay. I could have just said that they were different. I didn't have to say that one was better or more of something than the other, but that is a way of making comparisons. So generally we make comparisons with comparatives where we're comparing one thing to one other thing. So that's when something is faster, smarter, stronger. Or we compare one thing to many things, and we say one thing is the most, or the best, or the greatest, or the worst as well. So it goes both ways. So that's one way we can make comparisons. So that's my thesis statement. So the first thing I'm going to do then is talk about primary sources. And as you can see, I hit Enter, and now I hit Tab to go in. And the first thing I would do is provide a definition of a primary source. And then this would just be a textbook definition. 
and uh, then I would provide examples. So some examples would be like the diary of Anne Frank. Um, letters, oh, of of the old breed, or Eugene Sledge. This is a World War II book written by Eugene Sledge. Um, and then, of course, Civil War letters, uh, news articles from, from the time of the event. So the uh, film of the uh, Hindenburg, and pardon me if this is not how you spell it, disaster. And let's see if this fixes it for us. I don't know. I'll check it in a second. And then, of course, the so I hit the Enter key. And now I'm going to hit Shift, hold down my Shift key, hit Tab once, hit Tab twice, hit Tab three times, all while you're holding down the Shift key. And so uh, secondary sources of information, um, definition again, and then examples. So like making of a murderer, the documentary about Stephen Avery. Now, I know some places tell you you can't just have one item underneath. You have to have two. Hogwash. That's, there's no rule about that. That's just a made-up rule. Um, so Wikipedia would be a secondary source, and encyclopedias. Uh, almost all of your textbooks are secondary sources, unless the textbook was actually written by an expert who's act who actually has done research. So then it wouldn't necessarily be a secondary source. So that's how you make an outline. Okay. It's very simple. Word will pretty much format it for you if you want to change anything. That's right here. And remember the two keys on your keyboard that are super important are the shift key and the tab key. So to go from the one to A, to make an A, you hit tab. To go back to the one, it's shift, hold down the shift key and hit tab. Unlike this one down here, I had to shift and tab back three times, okay? And so each kind of one of these can constitute a paragraph in your essay. It really depends, though, on how you want to do this. So, for example, my introduction would probably be one paragraph. However, down here for my primary sources, I would have probably have uh, the definition be a paragraph, and then my examples be a paragraph. Uh, but the Diary of Van Frank can be its own paragraph. So you kind of have to gauge how you are going to do this because generally a, a, a college essay is five paragraphs. So one, two, three, four, five. I would have about six paragraphs out of this. And it really depends upon what things I want to emphasize. Like there's about, there's thousands of Civil War letters. So I could expand that. Um, the Diary of Anne Frank has been extensively written about uh, of the Old Breed by Eugene Sledge was actually turned into the miniseries The Pacific by Steven Spielberg. So there was all of this stuff that you could turn into more than five paragraphs. So for right now, if you just went by each of these Roman numerals, it'd be one, two, three, four paragraphs. But you could easily turn each of these middle units into two paragraphs. So how you break your outline into paragraphs is really up to you as the writer. 
and how much research you have and how much information you want to share with the writer, with the reader. So that's how this, how basically outlines work. And as you can see here, if I needed more examples, I could come up with more examples and I can kind of get some, gives me a map of what I'm going to do when I start writing. So that's why I really like outlines and that's why I always promote outlines, especially with beginning writers. So that's it for outlines and this is how you make an outline and then just of course save it. And you should have a OneDrive. So that's always a good one to use. And and just save it to your OneDrive. Anyways, have a great day.